everybody, and welcome to part two here. Uh, as you saw in part one, uh, I went over the materials that you need for lighting your kits, the type of LEDs, and so forth. So let's go ahead and take that and think about how we can use those to actually light our model kits. So here are four things to think about. One is you want to determine what it is you wish to light. Secondly, you want to determine the look that you're after. Do you want bright lights, flickering lights, etc.? Third, you want to determine how much room you have to work with, and that's going to help you decide the size of lights that you'll be able to use. And lastly, you want to determine where you want to put the power supply and the switch. So here I have two models, and let's go ahead and use those ideas and talk about how I approached each of these projects. So let's go ahead and use Colonial One here as our first example. So applying those four things that I talked about, uh, I knew first of all that I wanted to light the interior, and secondly, I thought it would be cool to display uh, the ship with exterior lights or spotlights shining off of it. So that makes the project fairly straightforward in that I needed just steady lighting, so I didn't need anything flickering or blinking. As to how much room I had to work with here, this model is essentially a straight tube, so there actually is uh, some decent amount of room to work with here, and that gave me some choices uh, with regard to the types of lighting that I had available to choose from. Now I needed to think about where I wanted to put the switch and the power supply. So I knew this project was going to be something that was going to be a, basically a static display. I didn't have any intention on moving the ship off the display. It was going to be an all-in-one thing. So because of that, I knew that I could put the switch and the power supply into the base. I didn't have to think of a way to cram it all in uh, inside the model. All right, so here's the model lit up. and. Um, the LEDs I decided to use for the interior were 3 millimeter cool white LEDs. There are five of them, and they're spread throughout the interior. And then I also used 3 millimeter LEDs for the spotlights as well. All right, let's go ahead and move on now to the Battlestar Galactica Viper that I have here. Two objectives that I wanted with this model was to light up the cockpit and the engines. The type of lighting I wanted for the engines was I wanted them to flicker. And uh, with regard to the cockpit, I knew I didn't want to have lights that were extremely bright. And you want to just light up the instrumentation panels. And I find sometimes uh, modelers tend to overdo it with the cockpit. Um, sometimes, you know, get excited just getting any sort of light into your model. And uh, don't take into account that, you know, instrumentation panels are not spotlights. So I knew that I wanted to uh, use smaller LEDs for that and uh, also had to have uh, wiring that's going to be fairly thin so we'd be able to you know, get it through the tight spaces that we had to work with here. As for where to put the power supply, again, knowing that we didn't have much room to work with, um, the power supply and switch had to be externally located, and um, so I knew I was going to feed it out of the model and into the stand. All right, so what were my final choices here with uh, regard to the type of lighting that I used? For the cockpit, I ended up uh, deciding to use 3 millimeter warm white LEDs. Now, and you can see we're getting pretty good illumination from them. Now, if I were to do this project today, I would choose instead SMD or chip sized lights because they would easily fit behind the panels. Um, and again, I can't complain here. I really am happy with the way this turned out, but it was a pretty tight fit. I think you'll find it a little easier if you use SMD lights instead. For the engines, you can see they flicker just as I wanted them to. Uh, I ended up using 1.8 millimeter flickering cool white LEDs from modeltrainsoftware.com. Now, uh, it's been a while since I've done this project, but um, if I recall, for some reason, I couldn't get them wired into a 9 volt. They weren't made for that. So they suggested that I use a um, either a coin size battery, which wasn't bright enough, or wire everything to a 6 volt, uh, which they could handle. So let me show you how that looks. Um, under the stand here. So I tried to utilize the stand that the model came with, and that's where you see this round uh, stand here. And uh, you can see the double A's are positioned here, and I also have a push switch. Now if I were to do this uh, today, I would just do away with the stand completely um, and just find something different that I could use as a display base. Um, and uh, that way we wouldn't have this round piece here, which I don't really like. Um, I, I installed this because there wasn't enough clearance um, for the AA setup here, so I needed just a little bit more lift, and so I glued it to this round piece that you see here. So I'll, I may eventually just do away with this stand altogether and just reconfigure it so that it looks a bit nicer, um, but 
Uh, the other thing I would also do is I would um, mount the switch so that I could access it from the outside, not having to lift the model of this way to turn it on. Now I'd encourage you to go back uh, to my list of videos and actually watch lighting the Mobius Battlestar Galactica Viper, because one thing that you um, have to do, as I mentioned in the previous videos, that there are really no, no instructions on how to do something like this. So sometimes you have to come up with an idea of how to position these lights um, because one particular challenge you're going to have here is how to mount them uh, so that the lights are centered properly in each of the engines. And so what I created was a mounting piece made of uh, plastic rods and uh, I was able to mount the lights that way. So again, I just refer you back to that video and you can see how I accomplished that. Let's go ahead and do one more model here now. And uh, so this is the Jupiter 2. Uh, obviously from uh, Lost in Space. This is the 12-inch Jupiter II. And uh, with this model, I had a couple objectives. One was to light the interior. And secondly, I wanted that uh, flickering uh, circular pattern that you can see uh, on the show. And there so happened to be a lighting kit that was available through Monsters in Motion at the time. And um, so we wanted those two objectives. And uh, with regard to... Uh, how much room we have. Uh, you can see we um, have areas around here on the back side, so I knew I could at least place the batteries and the switches there. I didn't want the uh, switches to be visible, and I didn't want them to be wired to a display base. I wanted the model to be as self-contained as possible. So, um, with the lighting kit, uh, came these two switches. Everything was really all pre-wired. You didn't have to really do anything except install the lighting kit into that uh, fusion reactor. And uh, so you can see it gives us that effect here. Really, really nice. So there wasn't really much to do except just to not build out the... because there is an interior for the underside here, or the lower deck. I didn't bother building that at all. Uh, because that was the only way to accommodate that um, that lighting kit. As for lighting the interior, at the time I had these strip lights that I got from culttvman.com. Again, you can see here how they are solderless. Um, I had a friend help me solder the switch together. This was really one of my first lighting projects. And um, so I thought that using the strips would give us nice even lighting throughout the interior because it is kind of spread out here. Um, so overall, it, it works pretty well. Let me go ahead and place this then on top here so you can see the model complete. All right, so I have all the lights turned off in this room, um, but you can see that the strip lights are doing a really nice job at illuminating the interior. Um, just bear with me. I know you can see all those wires there. I usually have them tucked behind a little bit better than that. Uh, also, a secondary effect that we're getting is lighting of the dome on top of the Jupiter II. And I did a mix of using a cool white strip and a warm white strip here, just to give us some variation in the interior. And really nice effect here with that lighting kit. Very, very happy with the way that turned out. So I hope with these models here, kind of gave you an idea of the thought process that I exercise as I uh, go through completing a project. Um, some of these things I think through before even laying hands on the model. Um, really the first thing you want to do is just kind of establish what you are looking for and that leads you down that path of being able to choose the proper type of lighting and so forth. Again, there are no instructions to doing this, so there's a lot of variety that you have uh, to choose from when it comes to picking out the type of lighting and that sort of thing, but um, really what it's come down to for me is utilizing conventional LEDs or SMDs. Those are my uh, choices these days that I tend to gravitate to uh, when it comes to um, the choice of lighting that I'm going to be utilizing with each project. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here showing you my Batmobile that I did earlier this year. Uh, I hope that you're finding this helpful, at least in getting your thought processes together as you consider lighting your models. In part three, what I'm going to do is go over in more detail a few other things with uh, installation of the lights, things to think about there, and I'll go over some stuff with soldering and wrap it up with a few other things. Right, if you have any questions, as always, contact me here on my YouTube channel or at InnerStarTheModeler at gmail.com. Take care. I'll see you in part three.